Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Mixed Mowers. Today I was looking to do the strimmer but unfortunately my fuel lines I have are just slightly too big so I won't be getting on and doing that. I've ordered some, they should be here today. I've ordered a selection so hopefully one of those will fit it and I can get on and do that one. So I want to get on and do this little power devil today, the one that came in Park Exchange just the other day. It needs the air box looking at, it needs re-gluing or attaching. I have found a spare on an on-site selling service, but I don't want to go down the road of um, purchasing that until at least I can try and repair this other one. So without further ado, let's get down and dirty and let's check out this little power devil. Right, and here it is. It's not in fantastic shape. It's just dirty, grubby, grimy, oily and horrible. But uh, it does it does at least run. The only downside to it is that the air box has snapped off at the bottom. And I'm hoping today just to repair that with some super glue or epoxy resin or something very similar. Um, as I, say, I have found a, a piece on, uh, on eBay for about £9, which will do the job. The engine does run. It won a full service and it just wants some some slight repairs. The grass box has come unattached here. That's only held on by Velcro. This needs repairing or replacing just this side. And the dead man's handle just wants um, putting around on the on the right side. So the little tiny things I can do first, get them done. So let me just swing it up here a bit. Let's just repair this dead man's handle whilst we're here. That's just a schoolboy error, pretty much. Dead man's handle actually belongs that way around. I dare say he put it the other way around because it falls down that way like so. But that's where it belongs, so it, it falls forward when uh, when you release the handle. So I may be able to attach a small spring or something just to stop that from from doing what it should be doing, which is just a bit it's just a bit strange what goes down from behind. He wants something just here just to stop it from going any further. So I may actually look into my, I've got a big box full of dead man's handles to see if there's, I've got something else to fit that. Right, so the only downside to this little dead man's handle side of the mower is that I put the handle around another way um, which is where it should go. It just doesn't quite, it do, doesn't stop it. It goes all the way over. It's not the end of the world. But I, don't, I think it's better than where it was before. Because where it was before was where the bloke had it, which was around this way. Maybe that is right. Do you know? What do you think? Let us know what you think. And that's working as it should. So I've not seen it down there before, that's that's why I ask, but uh normally up the top right let's get this lawnmower turned around okay so in the first instance the, the reason the um, bloke part X this in was because um, it, he said it wasn't collecting properly it wouldn't, wouldn't collect the grass but then the grass box has got a um, a hole in it where the velcro has come undone so look at that this is going to come up nice and not, not, not like brand new obviously, but just a little bit of care and attention and it'll clean up quite nice. Right, I'm surprised now this carburetor is even working as it should do because the air box is actually um, snapped off. Let's get the air box in. <coughs> so the air box itself, a little bit of clean up actually just is going to sit just on there and it's actually quite a good seal so I'm hoping if I undo these two bolts here I can take this away and clean it up and then use some form of epoxy resin just to hold it in place the air breather pipe is not connected either which is uh, another reason why it probably wasn't running right so let's just undo these two here drop this section off and then we know what we're dealing with on an additional note my um, extension bar is turned up for my, for my drill I'm quite pleased with so that'll help in the process these were only about four or five pound on the on Amazon 
and they just give you a bit a bit more a bit more length to where you want to be so Okay, so that section there, that should just come away. That's a bit we're after. So where's this, bring the airbox in. And as you can see, that should bond. It's all there, it's also good clean. So let's get on, let's get, let's get that set to where it needs to be. And then uh, hopefully that, that'll be that repaired then. Here's the part we need. Just want a bit of a clean up to get rid of some of this dirt. I'll put a bit of sandpaper across this in a bit just to get rid of the, make the edges a bit rougher so it'll bond better. So just a general clean up. I don't want to spray anything on it because um, I might put some carb cleaner, maybe, maybe that'll help. All right, let's put on some old rubber gloves because we're using carb spray. I'm hoping that this will actually, uh, will bond. I picked up some, um, some epoxy resin stuff from a local hardware shop. It is a brand name, but I've not used it before. So let's just give us a bit of a... a bit of that, just to clean this area off. And I'll compress it in a minute with the old air compressor. I just want to get most of this grime and dirt off. I say I'm surprised this carburetor is even working because of the, um, the amount of dirt that, that would have been taken in. Just trying to grab one of my dental picks just to take out any extra extra grimy areas. My toolbox is rattling. It's starting to annoy me. I just want to get this area as clean as possible so it will actually adhere. That's not too bad. Let's put that down there. Let's have a look at the other side. So I'm actually going to take, this is like it's been epoxied off already, so I might just try and take that off because it'll help, it'll help in the aid to um, the bonding process. It may be epoxy on itself. So let me just unwind these four screws. One, two, three, four, and I'll come back. Okay, so this is broken already. It's had some treatment already in the past. But it's got three good holes to hold it. I and mean, then what I try and do, I try and epoxy that last piece on whilst we're uh, in the process. So there's two bits to epoxy now, not just one. That wants a bit of a clean and scrape off, but it's fine. So now we've got the two edges. Let's give it a bit of a clean as well. And a bit of the old carburetor spray. A bit of rag. So it would go to all this trouble and you can buy you can buy this part second hand for about for about a tenner. But I already had the epoxy in. So and I can use it's a resealable tub so I can reuse it for another day, for another project. Right, let's have a look. So that's gonna go other way around. So it's gonna go like that. That's quite a good seal. If I can get it to uh, to hold, I may be able to put it in the vise to try and hold it, or if not, get some cable ties once it's in place just to hold it, hold it be, because there's no actual pressure there to hold it. So, right, that's the uh, that's the job. So let's clear the decks and let's uh, get some epoxy in. We mix some up and then uh, start to stick it down. Okay.
then what we're going to do is introduce some of this epoxy resin. It's got a little safety to feature it. So. Okay, all we're going to do is just introduce some of this epoxy resin stuff. It mixes itself once it goes down. What you need gives you about half and half. That should be enough for what I need. Tip it upside down. That's it. A little stick. And just start to mix that up. Let's bring in the piece of equipment to be applied to. I use it quite liberally to begin with. So I'll make sure I get all, all areas covered. This is only going to be sucking in air so I'm not overly concerned. And then apply it to there. And then I'm going to take my resin again. And just literally smear it on the back side and in all areas where I can physically get to it. Just so it forms a nice uniform bond all over. And you're not probably seeing much of this because my big big gorilla hands are in the way. But that's where it needs to be. Could done with an elastic band, really, couldn't I? That would have been quite, quite a good little tool to have now. I don't have one. I've got some smaller cable ties, just to hand. <clears throat> and maybe we can cable tie it. Might have to join two together. somehow just try and get that to, to hold in place. It doesn't want a lot, it just wants enough just to hold it. Let me try another two more, that's gone slightly too low. I might just put that down just for two seconds just whilst I get it ready. It is always starting to just grab already, I can, I can feel it. This takes about five minutes to cure, but I think it has already started. So, all right, let's put that on there. I might go underneath that fuel hose, underneath that air breather pipe just there. Oh, it's come apart. If I go inside there, that will then hook back on that, um, that pipe. And then just gently nick him up. I've already come back and the cable ties would be stuck to uh, stuck to this resin. But all right, that's got him. With my gloves, just want to smear these areas off, get rid of any excess. That's it. So that's now in place. That wants five minutes. It reckons, but I'll leave it a bit longer. I don't know if that epoxy's gone right off yet. I might just try and get that bit on there that was um, broken off. Yep, there goes that bit. That's it. Let's just put that in there as well. Just to see him on. That's got him. All right, I want to leave him, leave him be now. Okay, so we're back. Just want to give us a bit of a clean up where I can. We had a real heavy frost last night, so everything's a bit cold and frozen up out here. Just a general tidy and general clean. I'm getting in with the old air compressor in a bit. 
just to uh, to really pick this up. Made myself a nice little cheeky cup of coffee. But it's important just to try and get these lawnmowers, especially these cheaper ones, looking as good as possible. And that, that spray I use from that WD-40 stuff, it really breaks it all down. It's cheap, affordable, and does a good job. Once it's been air, once it's been air compressed, you, uh, you'll notice a difference. So that's just been sprayed, I haven't touched that bit there, look. Look, just wipe straight off. There's a lot of oil residue on here. Bring it right in there, look. Just runs it all off. So let me get my air compressor up, have a bit of a clean up in there, tidy that up. There's lots of oil down in here, so let's just see what the oil looks like. One thing we'll say about these engines, they pull over really easy. Okay, so we're over the full mark. We're here, we should be here, and we're here. So, we'll be doing an oil change anyway. Have you all out of it and give it a bit of a birthday. Let me fire the compressor up, and I want to clear some of the air so I know what I'm dealing with. Well, a bit of noise, but let's start to break some of this down. Most of it cleaned off. I want to get behind here where the fuel tank is. There's a little tiny, this a 10 mil, 10 mil um, nut just behind the fuel tank. I'll show you where it is, just so you can see it. It's right, just down in there. So I just want to take that 10 mil out. <coughs> I can get behind the fuel tank. The only reason I'm a bit suspicious is that all of these were behind the fuel tank. I don't know whether or not we've got a bit of a fuel leak going on or what we got, what, what's occurring but before I sell it on I want to make sure we don't have any issues here it comes size of that just throw the fuel tank on all right then a fuel tank I'm going to take off let me just grab my um, forceps Tank the one side. See, I clamped the wrong side of that, but these are really good because they lock off. So if you're doing a carburetor, you can literally just clamp it off a tank. Bomb, done, quick and easy. Set of medical forceps off of Amazon. About two and a half quid. Right now, I can get behind here. 
just have a tied up behind here, get it all cleaned off. As I say, there was a lot of cloths behind here, so I'm not quite sure as to the reason why they were there. Looking at these rags, they don't smell of petrol, which is good. They don't look very, very oily, so it may just been something there. He, he decided he wanted to clean his lawnmower off at one point in his life, but uh, never did it. So let me just finish clearing this, this section off behind here, which is really filthy. Right, so as you can see, the engine is now super clean. So it is, it, it's only cosmetic stuff I've done, but as I say, when I fire it up, I want to make sure that we, if we have got any leaks at all, especially if there's anything terminal going on, um, that we can remedy it. Next, I want to take this pull cord assembly off because that's all covered in, in grime behind there. I'll give that a good clean as well. Okay, cool. So as I say, I bought these uh, extension bars. I've got um, three quarter, half inch, and what have you. I've got these three different sizes. So I'm quite pleased with them because it gives give you a bit more depth to get the gun away from the um, from the machine. See, so you can see what's going on more. That's on there. That's not going the right way. Yeah. Number two, maybe. Better. Four of them to do. I think it's just a case of this is just a proper lawnmower, just literally has not been clean serviced or anything, so the dog's the dog claws welcome there. Just want to clean the section up here before I move any more of it. Give it a clean and a blast off. that thing. She like brand new I tell you. Okay. I'm gonna pull cord assembly a blow off and then we'll take this cover off. Right next so just to take the top cover off there's four 10 mils one here one on the oil filler side and two on the front. And they have a slightly longer ones to go back in, so. So what have we got here straight away? We've got are these slightly shorter. Yes, yeah, so the slightly shorter ones go to the front. One on the old filler. And that's the extra long one. And then that should then just lift off. I've oh, one more to do, sorry, it's five to do. They may ask why I'm doing this, but I just want to make sure that the engine, the engine is uh, in good condition when it goes out for sale. I just dropped a little tiny plastic bung there somewhere. I did see it drop, here it is. That goes in between the oil filler. As you can see, look, all this dirt and grime in here, so it's got to come out. It can't stay in there. So let's get that, let's get that cleaned off. Put the carburetor onto the choke so it closes the flap.
Right, I've just given the inside of the hood a clean as well. That's all nice and clean. Everything else is absolutely fine now. I was just a bit concerned to say there was a lot of oil and a lot of grime coming off of um, off the top of the engine. So literally, I want to make sure that when, when it goes for sale, um, it's all cleaned off. I'm going to top this carb again in a minute. This spring's come out. I'm not quite 100% certain where it goes. It should be self-explanatory. What have we got going on here? That's caught up around that arm there. That shouldn't be so. Around there. Oh, yeah, that's caught up. It shouldn't be living like that. It should be living like that. I'm guessing it go down on, on this arm. Oh, it is there. It goes down on that on there. It's hiding. That's it. That one goes on there. That's better. That's all working as it should do. Just going to give us a bit more squirt off on top of this carburetor. Just to get rid of some of this other, this other gunk that is now fully exposed. I'm give it a bit of the old birthday, birthday juice. Right, that's all done. And looking much cleaner than what it was before. So, at least I now know what's underneath there. For when we go to um, go to sell it, I know, you know my, my conscience is clear. Uh, it, it is actually clean and been looked at. Not just a question, just chuck some petrol in it and shove, shove it back out on the market again. That's not what I'm about, so. Let's put these in. I must say, Roy's a boy. I am loving my new drill. You've got to be a bit careful with it, I must admit, because it is um, it is very, very powerful. So you've got to be a bit careful. Like I am now, because that went up, that went in too quick and tightened it all up. But it's always best just to do a bit at a time, I suppose. Around the other side, and we've got this long bolt that goes in this side against the engine. And then the extra long one with the rubber bung in the, in the middle on your filler. That goes in there. Do that one up around this side. That's that, and then we put the pull cord back on. That's all been cleaned up, jet blasts off. Just going to give it a little squirt of the old WD 40 stuff just to run it in so it's uh, nice and loose. A bit of a pull. So go down from a 10mm to an 8. This is what I like about this drill. As I say, this is, is so quick. I'll put on number one setting because I mainly don't want to do these up mega tight. But it does make my life so much easier. Now some of you may be thinking, you know, this is maybe a bit boring, this video, but this is what it's about. A lawnmower comes in, and this lawnmower only cost me, as a part exchange, I give him a tenner for it. I give him a tenner off the tenner off the total for the hater. So this old lawnmower only cost me a tenner. So I don't want to be investing any real money into it. But at the same time, it's got to be right. Nick them up. That's that done. All cord works. Right, so... I've got to do an oil change. I want to clean the back of this tank off without spilling too much fuel. That was a bit of a clean. Just a bit dirty behind there, so it's, whilst we've got most of it looking quite clean, let's give the rest of it a bit of a happy birthday. I mean, for a little engine, for a little cheapo, this has got quite a few bits on it. It's got an, a petrol on and off tap, which is quite cool. You don't see them on there. It's got an, a petrol filter. Which you don't see a lot of them either, you know. I wish some of the the middle of range stuff comes with uh, came with this sort of stuff. So let's put this fuel line back on without spilling too much of the old petrol. That's gone on. I just want to put the clip on at the back. Where's my long nose, long nose pliers? 
In fact, I might even use a forceps if I can't get this in first time. A bit khaki handed, as they all are. That's got in. Bit of encouragement. I might even get a better purchase on that when the, when the engine's up and the uh, tank's on. That's got him. Like right, that's on. Uh, that had the long bolt, didn't it, at the back. I'm not going to bore you doing that up because that'll take me a little while because it's quite fiddly. So give us two ticks. All right, that's all that done. So I'm happy with that. Bit of that on there. Slowly but surely, we're starting to get rid of all this grime. Slowly but surely, it's starting to all come off. And when it's all done and ready for sale, it should look beautiful. Beautiful, I tell you. So, let's get in there. Right, next I want to do the oil change on it. Then I want to check the plug. The filter's actually really good. As I saw it yesterday. The filter don't need doing. So let's have the oil, oil out of it. And literally all I'm going to do is just remove the, the oil filler. And the oil in this is absolutely black as you're at. So that's been in there, been in the yonks and yonks, probably since day one. Let me grab my extractor. And as you've seen me do before, on many occasions, just literally going to take the pump out. This is Riley's best bit, it's bit he likes to do. He's not here today, he's at school. He's gone back to school. He asked if I was going to do, do, do a recording today. I told him no, because it's only kick off. But you'll see him again at the weekend. We're coming to one together. But it's nice to see everybody on here saying hello to him and wishing him well and all that sort of good stuff, that's, that's fantastic to see. As I say, he gets a lot of enrichment out of it and if he's happy and daddy's happy, that's all I want for any of my kids, is just to be happy in life. And because Riley's a bit more special than others, if he can just spend a bit of time out with the old man, get some nice comments, that's fantastic. And as I say, if anyone's got any stickers I want to send him, my emails are on my videos. He'd be well chuffed to receive a sticker. So give us an email. And we're doing we're doing an, an opening up a envelope. We'd be well chuffed with that. So, right, let that drain out, and then uh, we will move on to the uh, the refilling and doing a spark plug. Right, that's just starting to finish up now. Tip it up a touch. Make sure we get it all out, especially if there's any water residue in there. I want it all out. So I'll come back in a bit once it's, once it's finished doing it. Okay, that's now finished. I've just been on the uh, website and I can't find the um, can't find the uh, the gap setting for the spark plug. I'm guessing that this is going to be the original plug. And it should be gapped accordingly. That's what I'm guessing. But I have looked and there isn't one for it. So if anyone knows. Put it in the comment below. And it's got NGK on it and it is a BPR 6ES and I've got some of them so I'm just going to check the gap, gap setting on that and then just um, match up for now. It was running absolutely fine so that'll be good to go. So old spark plug in, old spark plug out, new spark plug in. Right so I've got a new one and I just pretty much gapped it up the same as, as the old, just married it up. So if you don't have a gap setting for it, let us know. It was running absolutely fine. <coughs> well, I don't know if that spring was off my carburetor, so that might have something to do with it if it was mucking about, but the airbox wasn't on either, so there's quite a few bits that was missing on it that uh, will help it run better. H2 is right away in it. Oh, that's a bit of a pickle to get in there. It is tight. Just can't get no purchase on it. So that's right in the way. That'll do. 
that's good. I'll leave that sheet off actually because I'm going to do the uh, a blade in a minute. Cool. So now that oil is all drained out, that oil filler can go out the way. Just there, and let's bring in the bring in the old oil cap. Give it a clean. A lot of dirt and grime on there as well. Looks like Mrs. P's come back home. She's been down with shops. Taking advantage of the kids not being here. Right, so there's no wall in it. And uh, very little petrol, so we can tip this tip this mower up on its side. Because there's nothing in it to worry about. Let's bring it around and let's have a little look, see what we've got down in here. Go. hope you're happy so a lot of grass on here I'm gonna get all this off have a good scrape up before I do anything else it has, this has been freshly used all right let's give this D water go so just want just want to try it out see if it's any good it may not do it but uh, so let's put on number three setting and we're gonna lefty loosey righty tighty let's see what happens all right that's cool. Happy with that. That comes off. And a magnet tray. Cool. Blade comes off. Pins are in place, it's good. As you can see the blade is uh, defunct. But uh, I'll put a new edge on that. That's why he, he did say it wasn't wasn't picking up right, but that might have something to do with it. So whilst I'm sharpening the blade up, I'll give us a clean off here. You guys can have a cup of tea and come back very shortly. Right, that blade has been having ground. It has a slight bend to it going up. We had quite a big nick out of it, so I put a new edge on it and put it in the vise and just straightened up a touch. So now it's better. And also, as you can see, I've had a a real good clean up as well. You can see how thin these decks are. You can actually see daylight through them. So that's how cheaply made these are. But anyway, it's a it's a mower. So that goes back on. Here you can see I might have actually struck something there because there's a there's a little bit of wear just in there. That's taken a bit of a knock at some point in this life. But it's all in place. Uh, washer and bolt. On. Yeah, happy about that little Dewalt drill, that's uh, definitely, definitely holding its own. Right, let's put some oil back in it, a bit of petrol leakage coming out where it's been tipped up, that's, uh, that's normal, they don't like it. Right, let's uh, put some oil back into it, and then we can look at that um, air intake, see if that's actually cured, it's had about a half hour now, 20 minutes. Well, I think we're there with the oil. Let's have a look. I'm nearly out, so I did all some yesterday. So that should be here today or tomorrow, so just in time. <coughs> Let's have a quick little look. Steve. Bang on. There it is there. Where it needs to be. So that's a nice oil change. Right, let's go and check out this um, air box. I'll go and get it and we'll see if it's actually taken. Mrs. P's back from shopping. Been shopping? Yeah. Okay, so let's have a little look. So it is still very, very tacky, but it should have cured. So let me get my snips. We'll snip it off and see what happens. All right, let's have a look. Be a bit gentle because so it is tacky. Could probably do with having 24 hours. Is it going to stick how I thought it would do? I might better get away with it. Okay. I don't want to give it too much. I'm not seeing any flex. I'll say that's got it and did it get the bit at the bottom? That screw there. Yeah, okay. Let me um put the 
box back on top very gently and then we can try and fit it to the lawnmower. Okay, so that took the, the air box back on, which I'm happy with. And now let's get you guys down here, guys and girls. Let's fit that back to where it belongs. If it fits now, there it goes. I just want to put the air breather pipe back on where that belongs. Uh, that's a tight fit. I'll do that in a bit, I think. Let me get this secured down. Oh, how loose is that? I don't really want to upset this too much. I've got to go on that breather pipe. I think it's going to be a uh, engine hood off again just to uh, get the air breather pipe back on. I don't want to be mucking about with this too much because the longer I leave it the better. Let me see if I can just undo that breather pipe off of there. That would give me a bit more, that's better, that would give me a bit more play. And whilst that's expanded, I'll put that on that end there. That's better. Now looking a bit more sensible. That onto there, and then that air breather pipe. So I try and support it as best I can without breaking it. A lot of force going onto that, or so I'm pushing onto there, so that's a bit of a test. The air breather pipe is not brilliant. I'm just wondering whether that's going to actually impinge on on the throttle mechanisms. I don't think it will. Uh, let me just test for choke and what have you. See how tight that is. Let me just test for choke. So that's working. What about that? I don't want to affect the governor arm, you see. So that's all working as it should. Let's try and fit that back on without being too boisterous with it. That's better. That's it. All right. That is setting. And the longer I leave it, the better. So let's um, let's now wind up the uh, the two nuts. I think there were eights. They've been the tray. There they are. And hopefully that's a 10 and hopefully that would be a good little fix so rather than spending money for 10 pound plus postage for the part oh, what number number one yeah. i don't want to go on there why is that what's going on yeah go on that one I don't want to put too much pressure on it, just to begin with, because, uh... There we go. Just one nick, it's got to be tight. That's it. So I'd say, that's got it. There's actually more flex, actually, in the top bit, that it sits on the box. So that's got him, I think. Let's have a quick look at the old air box, the old air filter as I say, it's really clean, good to blow off but uh, that'll be fine, so I'll blow it off and then um, just want to get a bit of muck out of there because that's going to go straight into a carburetor now isn't it, got a spider in there as well, right, that's one nice and clean in there now, that's how we want it and then I was blowing the air filter off it goes back in there and then it has got a broken tab on there but nothing to do with that I haven't got the tab here so it sits on relatively well don't want to jump up okay so I think we're there so it's had the blade done it's had a new spark plug it's had an oil change it's had airbox fix um, general clean tire I've got still a bit of air blowing yet 
I'm not OCD, this is all right, looking nice and clean, so I want to get the most, most out of this little mower. It only cost me a tenner plus the aerodite, which I still got well over three quarters of it left, which you can reuse, so that's not a problem. Um, but it's good to go, I think. So let's get it. Oh, I've got to repair the grass box, haven't I? That's a two minute job, I think. Let's just grab that. So the grass box itself. Literally, it's just cheapo, and it's just a Velcro job. And we're going to do, I'll, bl I'll blow this all off. And that, all that does is just literally hooks round. <sighs> Let me blow that off quickly. Just hooks round, and then just back on itself. So let me do a quick blow off. So all the Velcro has all come apart, see, so. Let me just blow it all off, and we'll uh, put it back together. Uh, H Tilly back on would be good first mech. That's when I get stumped by an HT lead. There it goes. Right. Let's get it there. Let's put the box back on it. Put the box back on it. Well, the fuel should be turned on. So I didn't touch that. Good, that all works. There's my old mother in law. There she is. Oh, mum. Yeah. There she is. Look, that's a little art. She's putting the old washing out. So, I haven't got her fixing lawn mowers yet, but she's next in line. She's been, on, she's been retired far too long and needs to start earning her keep. But she does really well, and Riley Boy loves her, so I'm happy with that. Right, so that's done. The only thing I need to do is literally change this. Um, this little configuration here it's on the world oh no, it might come off I've got a spare so I'll just uh, undo that and put a new one in the um I never throw nothing away that'll go in the bin I should keep the nut that's in it and uh, just put a new a new end on there right I've got one I'm gonna upgrade it as well to one of these so that um you have a pull cord a bit further down let's just do that that, that should stay put does it or not Oh, that's on the bloody tight. There you go, it does spin yet. That's better. Let's put that on. Put that there. And then when I go to pull it, they'll have the pull cord a bit closer up. It gets my way from the engine then, see? Boing, another upgrade. They can have that for free. Right, let's just fire it one more time. Chuck. That's good, all done. There's Mrs. P. Oh, Mrs. P. Yeah. She's put washing out as well. We've both got Nana and Mrs. P both out. You got no shoes on? No. You're gonna get wet socks in, aren't you? Yeah. There, there you go. Uh, she's put the washing out. There's my t shirt I wore yesterday. She's been to the shops as well, bless her heart. She's working hard whilst Riley boys at school. So, we'll get a bit of peace and quiet today. That won't last long, he'll be back a bit later on, no doubt. So that one's all up and running now. Um, just to about a dead man's handle, but uh, that's the way it goes. It must be the way it's designed, I can't see it, but um, that's the way it is. So, good, good, let's finish up. Okay, so I just found also these two handles, which some sharp-eyed Scottishman saw on um, in one of my tubs. So these will be sent up to you, Mr. Scottish Prepper, 
they'll be on their way to you today or tomorrow. I did say today, but uh, I need to try and get out and uh, get a few more bits done. But I'll put them in a bag, put them in a van, and they'll be on their way to you very, very shortly. Just got off the phone, actually, funnily enough, to a, a fellow YouTube reviewer who does some mowers um, and a good chat with um, Roy as a boy on the phone, which is cool for about half hour, 45 minutes, just chatting about mowers and all that sort of good stuff. So nice to catch up with Roy. It's good, good talking to you. Right, so that's that mower done. Let's uh, finish up. Fantastic. So that's another little lawnmower that's coming for a park exchange. That was the one that I sold the Hater 41 with. He bought in the uh, little Power Devil, which had the broken airbox. That's all now fixed, up and running. So that mower only cost me a tenner. It hasn't cost me anything to put it right or buy the service. That would be put up on my marketplace. It's had the blade done, spark plug, air filter blown out, air filter box repaired, a general tidy up and a good clean round all around. It's been run up for a little while now and no oil leaks or no petrol leaks. So she's ready to rock and roll. So thank you very much for watching this episode of Mixed Mowers. And I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found it informative. I can't even speak at the moment. I've got a bit of a dry mouth. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and um, definitely leave a comment down below. And I look forward to seeing you on the next edition of Mixed Mowers. Check you later.